Swifter. The sport of boxing has been called the sweet science, but I'm punch drunk on the sweet computer science of Swift. In this video, we're going to begin our Bip the Guy project. We'll set up our user interface and import assets for the project. We'll leverage code you wrote in the UI view animation project to quickly make the image bounce like it's being punched. And we'll leverage the play sound function that you wrote and used in earlier apps to play the punch sound. Since you know how to do this, we'll issue it as a challenge, and then we'll learn something new. We'll add a tap gesture recognizer to the image so that we can respond when the image is tapped. We'll create an IB action for the gesture recognizer. You'll learn the important step of allowing user interaction with an image that has a gesture recognizer attached to it. And you'll be amazed at how quickly we can get all of this done. Put up those programming dukes. We're ready for our next project. Swifters, you already know how to build a significant portion of this app, so we'll issue the first part of the setup as a challenge exercise. I'm assuming you did the UI view animation project just before this, and if you did, you downloaded the assets that we're going to use in this project as well. If not, you can access them at bit.ly slash prof-g-swift files, download the ones for Bip the Guy. You can delete the existing app icon set and then drag over all of the files and folders inside of the Bip the Guy folder at this URL and add them to your assets catalog. Then you're going to create a user interface that looks like this one here on the right. Now we've got a UI button with the title punch down below. It should be attached to an IB action named punch button pressed. The height of the button is 30 the width is 100. You can set those up when you constrain the button, and you'll also want to constrain it 12 points from the bottom of the safe area and center it horizontally in the container. No left, right, or top constraints. Now the image view is going to be set with top, left, and right constraints of 12, 0, and 0 respectively, all to the safe area, and the bottom should be 12 from its nearest neighbor, which should be the top of the punch button. Now you can add any image that you want, but I've offered you a clown image. I'm assuming most folks don't have a fondness for clowns, so this is a good one to bip, but feel free to add your own image if you'd like. Then leverage the challenge solution that we completed at the end of the second video in the UI view animate series and use that to get the image view to look as if it's being punched so it pulses when the punch button is tapped. Set the duration to a quarter of a second. I suggest a damping of 0.2 and a velocity of 10.0. Then, use the play sound function that you wrote and leveraged in prior projects to play the punch sound just before you call the UI view animate in punch button pressed. Now you might notice a little lag the first time the sound is played. If that shows up, we'll address it in a later lesson. You know what to do. Pause. Give this a shot. And let's take a look at a solution. Ladies and gentlemen, start your Xcodes. Let's create a new Xcode project. Single view app. Click next. We'll give this project the name Bip the Guy. Make sure the language is Swift and we're using the user interface storyboard, not Swift UI. Click next. I'm going to create the Git repository on my Mac and I'm going to save this on the desktop. Click create. Double click that window title bar to stretch things out so that Xcode fills out the whole screen. Then head over to the assets catalog. Click on that app icon set. It's got nothing in it, but press the delete key to get rid of it. You're about to copy over a new one that's got a spiffy little punching fist icon. Now head over to the finder. Again, I assumed if you followed the earlier video that you have the Bip the Guy files on your Mac. If not, you can download these files from the URL shown on the challenge slide. Then command A to select everything in the Bip the Guy files folder. You should have an app icon, app icon set, a clown PNG, and a punch sound MP3 file. With all these files highlighted, drag them over into your assets catalog, let go, and you now have all the media files you need to build the Bip the Guy app. So let's do it. Head over to the main storyboard, click the library, find a button, drag it over to the bottom of your view controller, drop your interface items inside the view controller to make sure that they're well within inside the safe area because we're going to be constraining things to the safe area. This will just ensure that that shows up as an option when we add new constraints. Double click on the button and change the title to punch. Then I'll click on add new constraints. I'll set the width to 100. Keep the height at 30. Then I'll set the bottom constraint to 12. You should notice that the safe area is checked. Don't pull and check it again, otherwise that'll reset the 12 to whatever number is in there. With your safe area checked, 
a 12 in the bottom constraint, you can click on add three constraints. We have some red marks around the button and the button size isn't showing properly. That's because we've got to also click on align, click on center horizontally in container, add one constraint, and bingo, things are looking good. Now let's add that image view. Click on the library, find and drag over an image view. I'm gonna drag that out to the left and right margins. I'm gonna tug it down just a little bit so it's nice and inside the safe area. Then click to add new constraints. 12 from the top, zero from the left, zero from the right, 12 from the bottom. Now, if you click on the top constraint pull down, you should see that safe area is checked. And if you click on the bottom constraint pull down, you should see that it's gonna be constrained to the punch button, which is exactly what we want. Click on add four constraints. You can check to see how things look on devices of different sizes. This looks magnificent. Now click the image view. Head up to the attribute inspector. Under the image attribute, select the clown image if you are so inclined to bit the creepy clown. Otherwise, feel free to add and select an image of your choice. Then let's create our action in our outlet. So we'll click on viewcontroller.swift, option click on main storyboard to get in the side-by-side -side assistant editor mode. I'm gonna control drag from the punch button over, let it go just before the closing curly in the class. I'm gonna call this punch button pressed, type UI button, click connect. Then let's control drag from the image view, let go just after the class definition initial curly. We're gonna call this image view, click connect, and we've got our outlet in our action. Now remember, if you did the UI view animate project in this second video, the last video in that series, you created a bit of code that pulsed an image. Well, we're going to use that same bit of code. I'm going to open up my UI view animate project right in viewcontroller.swift. I'm going to find the pulse pressed IB action. The portion I want is this highlighted portion down below. Notice what we do. We create an image frame from the original image view frame. We set up constants to shrink the width and the height of the image views rectangle. We're then going to use these two constants to create a new CG rect. That's going to be our smaller image frame. We create this smaller image frame as a CG rect with the X and Y parameters taking the existing X and Y and adding in the image width to shrink and the image height to shrink. That moves the top side down and the left side to the right. Then we also need to shrink the width and the height and we do that by subtracting two times the image width shrink and the image height shrink. Then once we've got this smaller image frame, we set our image view dot frame to the smaller frame. There's no animation here. We immediately shrink it on screen. But then what we do is we animate from the new existing frame size, smaller image frame, over a quarter of a second to the original image frame. Now we do this with no start delay, no options, but we add a little bit of spring physics. We set use spring with damping to 0.2 and the initial spring velocity to 10. That makes it very quick. So with this highlighted, Copy it, return to your Bip the Guy project, paste this code right into punch button pressed, and we don't have to make any changes because we already named the image view, image view, just like we did in our previous project. Let's build and run and see how this works. Our app runs, click that punch, and oh, you're giving him some bips. It would be much more satisfying with sound though, so let's add some sound. You are now an old hand at working with sound, so you know what to do. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import AV Foundation. Then we're going to create an audio player. We'll say var audio player colon av audio player exclamation point. So we declare this variable, but we don't initialize it yet. It's an implicitly unwrapped optional. Then I'll make some space for my play sound function underneath view did load. Then I'm going to copy that most reusable play sound function that I've already used several times from my Word Garden project. So let's open up Word Garden. In that view controller, I'm going to find my play sound function, highlight the whole function, copy it with a command C, head back over to Bip the guy, and paste play sound in right here. Now let's head down into punch button pressed just before we call UI view animate. Let's type in play sound. Xcode knows we've got this function inside this file. Press return, open and close double quote. We need to pass in the name of the sound that we're gonna play when we punch. Let's make sure that we copy the proper name from our asset catalog. So we'll click on the asset catalog. And here's a pro tip for making sure that you can copy the name exactly as it's spelled. I'm gonna click on my punch sound. I'm gonna press return. This opens up a little text entry box so that I could rename this. I don't wanna rename it, but I'm gonna command A and command C. That selects all the text and copies the text to the clipboard. This way I've got the string for punch sound. I can now go back into my viewcontroller.swift and paste that string in between the double quotes. Guaranteed to not have any spelling errors. Now let's build and run. No errors. Hammer time. Let's click that punch. 
Oh! <laughs> Not bad, Swifter. You threw this whole app together in under 10 minutes. That'll get the aggression out. It'd be even better, though, if instead of pressing the punch button, we got to bip the image. Let's learn how to do that with a tap gesture recognizer. Let's head over to the main storyboard. Click to enter the library and type in the word gesture. Look at this, we get a whole bunch of different gestures in here. Tap, pinch, rotation, swipe. Feel free to explore these other gestures on your own, but we want the tap gesture. What does this do? My library show and description, and it says, sends an action message when the user taps. That's what we want. Now click and drag the tap gesture recognizer, but mind where you let it go. It will be attached to what Ever object you drop it into. If you let it go here, it will be inside the entire view. That's not what we want. If you let it go on top of the button, it'll be associated with the button. That's not what we want either. We want to let it go on top of the image view. Make sure just the image view is highlighted. Now take a look over here at the document outline I'm about to let go. And ho, oh, I see a tap gesture recognizer now shows up in my dock outline. Now a gesture recognizer doesn't show up physically inside of the view controller, but up here in the dock, you can see that it's added an additional icon. And if you hover your cursor over, it says tap gesture recognizer. Now the gesture also has some attributes. We're not gonna change any of those attributes, but we do wanna create an IB action. So let's get into our assistant editor mode. Click view controller option, click on main storyboard, and you can control drag directly from tap gesture recognizer listed in the dock outline. And we're gonna plop that down just before for the last curly in the class. We'll name this image tapped. Make sure that you select the type as UI tap gesture recognizer and click connect. Now I'll get back into my standard editor and to get my image tapped function working, I'm just gonna copy the code that's inside a punch button pressed, command C, paste it inside of image tapped. But now I got the same code in two functions. You might say, hey, what about DRY? Don't repeat yourself. Well, I'm not gonna refactor because in the next video, we're gonna get rid of the punch button. Now I'm back in the main storyboard. I've clicked on my image view. I'm gonna build and run and show you that this is not yet gonna work. And the reason why I wanna show you is because this is a really easy step to overlook. Xcode's not going to give you any warnings as to why your image isn't responding to taps. Hopefully by seeing this in action, you'll remind yourself of this critically important step. And actually to show you that the image tapped function isn't running, I'm going to click back on viewcontroller.swift and I'm going to click in the line number gutter to add a breakpoint at the very first statement inside the image tapped function. And by the way, it's totally okay to add breakpoints while the app is executing in the background. You don't have to restart. Now, if my image is responding to taps, I should pause here each time I click on the image. That's not going to happen. Here's our app. You can't tell, but I'm clicking away at this image and it's not responding. Now I'm going to click on my breakpoint and drag it out to get rid of it. We'll know things are working when we hear the punch sound and see the animation. So the big warning here is if you attach a gesture recognizer to an image view, you have to set its user interaction enabled property. Otherwise, the gesture will not be recognized. So I've clicked on my image view. In the attributes inspector, I can see this interaction attribute user interaction enabled is not clicked. I'm going to click the checkbox. Now I'm going to build and run. Hammer time. No error. I despise this creepy clown. I'm gonna go ahead and click on him. <laughs> oh, we've got sound and animation and pugilistic perfection. Swifter, you've done some stellar work. In the next video, we're gonna figure out how we can take images from your image library or use the camera to put your own images in there to bip. Keep at it.